We'll open it up for questions. Hey, Coach. Uh, Dexter said he uh, that he felt like you you really overextended yourself to help him get integrated into uh, the program when he got here early. What, what was it that you saw in him and in, in his ability and his you know who he was that that I know you were meticulous about your time that that time was was uh, necessary and and a good return on investment. Well, that was kind of him to say. Uh, he's he's one of the more he's probably the most competitive person, yet the kindest person combination I've ever been around. Uh, he's he's the best listener I've ever coached. Nikhil Alexander Walker was really close. Dexter's just older, and so he has experience was coached by one of the better coaches in the country, regardless of your opinion of that coach. He can really coach in between the lines. Dexter wants to be coached. Not all players want to be coached. They say they do, but in the heat of the moment, not everybody wants that. And I actually think that the harder you coach him, the more comfortable he is. And that's a rarity anymore. Sometimes you can coach guys um, hard for a segment of time, and then you need to back off. He's he's better when you're harder on him. And he's the most selfless teammate that I've seen that's been a part of an organization for seven months. I mean, he's told me six or seven times to sub him out of a game. Remember when H hit that shot at, 1.9 on the clock. Dex is always in the game at the end of halves. He had asked to come out. And as we're walking off, he goes, see, I told you. He's so selfless. And his overall objective is he cares about winning. And he's very selfless in that regard. And he's integrated himself into how we go about things and been as receptive as I've ever been around. You know, when you're a high school senior and you have never been coached at the collegiate level, because of your lack of experience, you just assume this is how it goes. He's been around. And, I mean, he was at the Lincoln Center just getting his – head kicked in figuratively and he was like loving it like I'm gonna do some more and he's still the same his impact on our team is unquantifiable I think there's a lot of good players on our team and at times some of them have been borderline great but if you look at what's moved the needle he guards the best player he's ranked in the top 10 in rebounding in this league. I think he's probably had more double doubles than anybody on our team. Doesn't get fouled often. It's hard to, it's hard to get double doubles. And when you're guarding the best player night in and night out, and you lead our team in defensive rebounding, those are, those are rare stats for a perimeter player. I know you brought him here to play defense and to get rebounds, but when he does kind of spark the offense like he did in Missouri in the first half, what what is that? You know, his numbers in shooting with Buzz are uh, not the best on our team, but second or third. And even when he does shooting with Buzz, he's in full sweat. There's no change in his the countenance of his face, whether he's doing good, whether he's doing bad. Um, I shake his hand. Every time I see him, you know, where I grew up, that was a big deal. Um, when you see someone, you should shake their hand, say hello. I shake his hand every day. And and now he wants to shake my hand before the second half of games. I always shake their hand before the game. He's shaking my hand before the second half, seeking me out. I just, I've learned so much from him. Um, and I haven't had a lot of, well, I mean, I never met him. Until he came here. Um, he didn't visit. Uh, I didn't go see him in Wichita. 
I, I don't really like all of that. Let's go in the portal and I'll go to your campus and go to your dorm. I don't, I haven't done that since the portal started, but I love his mom, love his dad. Uh, they're not together, but they're so supportive and they're just as supportive of me as if they've known me or our program. Like he's been here since he's a freshman. He's just bought in from the very, very beginning. Buzz, do you find it odd or unusual that your predecessor here would uh, take, I don't know, take a role is a, a way to put it, but uh, encourage him or give him a, a good report about, you know, uh, the possibility of transferring here. He's telling us that, that Billy Kennedy was always telling good things about Texas A&M, that it would be a good place for him to look. Oh, I didn't know that, uh, but I believe that. I think BK is probably top five human being ever employed as a head coach in any sport. I mean, BK left me books to read and a note in the, in the, in the desk drawer. He didn't know I was getting the job. The note was to whoever replaces me. I mean, uh, when I talked to Mr. Byrne, when the job opened him and coach Thornton, I told him they needed to hire BK. I know that there were some other guys that were involved, but, I didn't know what you just said, but anything that would re relate to character regarding BK, uh, I for sure believe it. Uh, your thoughts on a Tennessee team that's coming in here kind of limping a little bit, lost four of six, and looks like they're struggling on offense, but uh, I assume that that you probably take that uh, uh, philosophy that, you know, the wounded animals, the most dangerous or something like that. Yeah. I, I, Olin, their, their defense is ranked number one in the country. And uh, in the numbers that matter, uh, they're ranked number four in the country. So, like, they are as physical and as talented um, and as good as any team that we've played, uh, regardless of prior results. Uh, you're going to lose in this league. You're going to get beat up in this league. Uh, they've been playing without some of their players. I know Coach Barnes won't address that, and that's one of the reasons why he's a Hall of Fame coach. But – yeah, I would say that uh, what he has done at Tennessee mirrors the consistency of what he did when he was the head coach in Austin. Um, great respect for him, that their style of play, uh, they have multiple players that have played that style, and you can tell the experience and the fluidity that they play with. Uh, there's a lot of experience on that team, and numerically, defensively and from a rebounding standpoint, they're they're in the upper echelon of all teams in the country. And what they do offensively causes stress uh, because it's very well designed. And they have really, really good players. What makes them such an elite defensive team? Uh, I would say, first of all, their size, their length, their athleticism. And another adjective that most teams um, struggle with specific to them is their strength. You know, a lot of times you say, oh, they're big. Those guys are big and big. They're big both ways. And I also think that they are very well schooled in they never take themselves out of a play. Um, they stay – they're very rarely in rotation, and that's why teams have really struggled to score, which is why they're number one in the country. You're going to shoot the ball, and they're going to be in front of you. And so their defensive rebounding numbers are just as elite as their offensive rebounding numbers. I think part of their offensive rebounding success is because of the design of their offense. And there's very few unpredictable shots that they shoot. But defensively, you you pretty much shoot the shot that they want you to shoot because they're not going to get in rotation. Um, it's it's I, I'm not looking forward to playing against it, but watching it as a coach, it's fun to watch because they're it's it's how I would want a defense to play, and you know like uh, just like when you would go to a camp and they would say you know on the catch have your hands up. Every single time they have their hands up, every single time there's a shot, the shot's contested. They, you're you're very rarely going to get a naked look against them, and the looks that you do get are n not going to come out of rotation because they don't get in rotation. 
Oh, this is, might be just about the furthest thing from your mind right now, but in terms of recruiting, it's important. 12th Man Foundation last week announced its field to, you know. Yeah, I read that uh, yesterday. There was an article. Um, somebody uh, sent, sent me the article and they printed it out. It, it was a website I never heard of. You got me. Yeah, it's like what all of the administrators read. Was it on three? Yeah, on three. Yeah, on so, three. So just the importance of that in terms of recruiting and getting players in NIL in terms of the 12th Man Foundation taking that step. Brent, I would say it's ginormous. Um, and, you know, I've stayed away from the topic while also abiding by team rule number one. But the reason I'm thankful that Travis and Brady are in control of it now is, yeah, I, I, I have no idea. Like, literally, I have no idea. And that's even better. And I think it's better not just for me. I would say it's better for all of the coaches here. But however it got to that point, I would – the state of Texas law, the NCAA, if that's still a thing or whatever whatever that is, um, how it can work because of 12th man's nonprofit – like, however all of that worked and all of the lawyers got that solved, yeah, I think it's huge, very much so. Can you talk about Wade Taylor being named the player of the week? And just, I know last week against Arkansas, two points in the first half. I think he finished with 16 in the second. He just yeah. seems to be able to deliver at least a spark for you guys when you need it. Well, he has um, a 4.0 GPA last semester. I think that'll continue – the rest of his time here, and he has a very high EQ, um, a very high EQ of himself, but a very high EQ of his teammates, his coaches. And I think the combination of his IQ and his EQ for sure has bled into his IQ as a player. And, you know, sometimes uh, I, I talk to Travis about this a lot. I know he walks a delicate line because – uh, some of what he does is considered risky, and some of what he does is very high risk, high reward. But he continues to mature in that line of walking that line on both ends of the floor. And his explosion to start the second half on Wednesday was a huge spark, as you said. And I know we play with the ultra high turnover rate in Columbia, but when we weren't turning it over, uh, him making 10 free throws, that, that changes our team. Um, and he, he has the propensity to get fouled because he walks such a delicate line. Like, Hey, is he about to drive? Hey, is he about to shoot? Is he about to create for someone else? Um, I don't really know, to be honest, like what happens in the league other than who we're playing at that particular time. So I don't know like who else was in contention, nor do I know who votes on it. Uh, maybe Mr. Sankey does that by himself, but um, he's player of the week for us. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if he's player of the week in the SEC, but we'll give him a plaque or uh, something. He can be player of the week for us. And uh, he was deserving of it for sure in those wins. During his two years here, when did you feel like you started to see him kind of earn that confidence to know, as you mentioned, kind of how to walk that line and when to take control and kind of doing it on a more consistent basis? Well, it happened during COVID. Um, he was a senior in high school, but I, I'll be honest with you, uh, Devin and I believed in four from the very beginning. I, I think he's walked that line whether he was uh, – at Lancaster High School, whether he was playing for Urban DFW Elite, like he's just one of those players. Uh, I think I went and saw him the second day I was employed here. I took the whole staff, uh, and I've said it since he got here. Did I think he was going to be fifth in the league in scoring after 14 games as a sophomore? No, sir. Uh, did I think he would be fourth in the league uh, in assist in his fourth semester? No. Do I think that he impacts winning, even though that might not be the picture in the encyclopedia that you're looking for? He may not have the measurables uh, at the NFL combine that you want to draft in the first round. But 
I, I'm better with guys that don't have all of those numbers because um, they don't have that attitude. And uh, normally they haven't walked that same path. His parents have raised him. Uh, I, I, I see his dad very often. Um, his dad is an example to me of how to be a husband and a father. Uh, he's done an incredible job with both of his children. Uh, the, I mean, his sister's the all-time leading assist at Southwest Texas. And she graduated early and she's getting her master. Like, they're just, uh, they're about the right things. No, no glamour, don't want glamour, want to work, uh, want to go to school. Like, they are about the right things. And uh, for is you can tell that's that's how he was raised. He just happens to be able to make good decisions with the ball. Buzz, you've mentioned before about seeing a team four times before you play them. With the shorter rest between the Saturday to Tuesday, how, how do you get that all in? Yeah, I don't like it at all. Uh, I feel real rushed right now. I know we're going a little earlier because the women are playing and we actually get to practice and read when we have a home game. But <laughs> Like the the hour that we moved everything up, I don't like it uh, because everything is so regimented. And I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying I can coach. I'm not saying anything politically charged or subliminally. But the whole program kind of operates off of my calendar. And when my calendar, you know, like uh, 945 on Monday, I need to have already done my first set of squats. Like, and hurry up, let's talk, and then I got to get back in there, right? And, like, that doesn't mean that that's the way to do it, it, it but but the whole program kind of operates like that, right? Like, it's crazy. Um, I don't sleep the night of a game. And normally coaches don't sleep the night before a game. So my body feels it the day after the day after the game, right? So we play on Saturday. I'm not going to sleep Saturday, but my body can function on Sunday. But Monday is typically when I feel it. And so when we have to play on Tuesday, there's a lot of work that has to happen. So I don't get home till late from last night. And I was out of sorts this morning. I don't use an alarm. I don't have a clock. And so I got up and I said, sweetie, what day is it? I was just kind of, you know, like sometimes when you wake up and you're just like, where am I? You know, like when I wake up in a hotel, I don't really sleep in a hotel very well because I'm not in my routine. And my wife says it's one day before. And I'm like, whew, what a house this is <laughs> that my wife is saying our words. It's one day before. Oh, all right. I'll see you later. You know, like just, it, yes, it's a, our, this will, today is our eighth consecutive day of very regimented work and we don't get an off day until Wednesday. And so this is the second time it happens. I know it's, I know Tennessee, um, Tennessee actually happens to have been on the same schedule. Uh, the last time this happened to us when we went Wednesday, Saturday, Tuesday, the team we were playing, they they were still on Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. And I think that's a competitive disadvantage. But that's for another conversation at another time. So we will miss a rep. And so what we try to do yesterday, we call it a rep and a half. And then today will be two and a half. And then tomorrow at shoot around will be three and a half. So, yeah, it, I think it matters for sure especially when it's not a mirror opponent. If the transition occurs and it's a mirror opponent, you already have some stored up reps and knowledge because you know Tennessee's the fourth ranked team in the country and so good. And we are on the road on Saturday with a quick turn on Sunday with huge importance to today. Coach, uh I know you guys probably want to focus on the game at hand, but you guys allow That's yourselves it. to think about the SEC championship game last year. Just I watched it. Motivation. I watched it. I watched it. Um, 
No, I don't think so. Uh, I think it was our fourth game in four days at one o'clock. I think the game started fourteen to zero, and I think they scored us, outscored us by one point the rest of the way. Um, they were and are more talented than we are. Um, they were had not been on the same journey that we had been on. I think we gave great effort. Um, I think there was a little bit of surely we're in the NCAA tournament. Our net is 36. Surely winning three in a row. I think there was some of that. Um, but as far as motivation relative to this year, no, sir. All right. I cover it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.